find the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift of the following equations. So you want to find the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift of the following equations. So I'm going to start with 42. So when I'm done with 42, then I'll come to 43. So now for the first one, which is um, 42, so that's going to be question 42. We're given y equals negative half sine of 4x plus 3 pi. So this is what we want to find, the amplitude, the period, and um, the phase shift. Now what you would recall is the general form, like we did in the past videos, the general form of a sine function is y equals a sine of x. So y equals a sine of x. This is the general form. y equals a sine of omega x. This is the general form of a sine function. Now, but then what you would observe is that the functions we are given here, they have an extra term as the argument of the trigonometric function. Now, because they have an extra term, we also have general forms when we are taking into consideration the extra term. And that is given by y equals a sine omega x negative phi. Negative phi. So this is the general form when we take into consideration whether it has an extra argument aside the normal one. Now, because we want to write it like this, to just be in terms of omega times something. So what we're going to do is this is the same thing as a sine of. Now when you bring omega out, this becomes omega into, so you have x negative phi all over omega. So this closes off. And this is what you have. So you have omega x. So it's, it's the same thing I wrote. This is just omega times x. You have omega x and omega times this. So if you see, the omega here is going to cross the omega here. And then you still obtain your phi back. So it's still the same thing. So let's just see. This is the general formula of a sine function. Taking into consideration every other thing or constraint it might have. So our aim in this lesson is I want to try and write my new equation in this form. So I'm going to try and write it in this form. Now how do I start? So you can see you have y, um, let's say you have um, y, y equals, so you have negative half, then you have your sign. Now what you have here is, this is the same thing as 4x plus, now 3 pi, you can just say 4 all over 4 times 3 pi. So I've not done anything. Now this is the same thing as, 4 over 4 is the same thing as 1, so I've not really done anything here. So this is negative half, the sine of, now you'd observe that 4 is common. That is, this is 4, and this is also 4. So I can bring 4 out. So what I'm going to be left with is you're going to have x plus, see, so this is this is off already. So you have 3 pi all over 4. So this is what you have. Now, but then, in the equation I have here, you have a negative sign here. You can see here. So to include the negative sign here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little trick, which is it's not really a trick, but just something to help you. So this is just 4. Then this is going to be x. Now you have negative, negative 3 pi all over 4. It's still the same thing, right? Let's just make the whole thing fancy. So negative times negative is still positive. So I've not done anything. This is your 3 pi all over 4. This is x. And this is just 4. So I just did that to just make things um, a little good. So now when we compare this, so this is my y. Now when I compare this to the new y, um, which I'm going to call, this is this is the general form, y equals a sine of, um, let's say you have omega into, so what we have is for the general form is x 
negative phi all over omega. So this is phi all over omega. So this is what we have for the general form. And then we close brackets, we close this. When you compare this, you observe that your a corresponds to this, right? Your omega, this is your a, your a corresponds to this, your omega corresponds to this, and then your phi all over w corresponds to this. So based on what we have there, it says that your a equals negative half, your omega equals 4, and then it says phi all over omega equals negative 3 pi all over 4. Now I forgot to mention something. When I explain this to you, I know you might be curious, you might be very curious to be wondering what phi all over omega, what it represents. Now, phi over omega simply means, or is called, the phase shift. So this is called the phase, the phase shift, the phase shift. So that's what it's called. So anyway, we have our phi over omega. We have omega. We have a to be equal to, um, to be equal to negative half. Let's now go back to the question. The question says, find the amplitude. That's what I'm going to do first. So the first thing is the amplitude. So the first thing is the amplitude, the amplitude. Now the amplitude is the same thing as the absolute value of A. Now the absolute value of A is the absolute value of negative half, which is half. So the half I obtain here is, is from here. This is negative half, and that is half. So the next question says, find the period. The period. So you know the period is denoted by t. So one find t, and we said t is the same thing as two pi all over omega. So that is two pi divided by what is your omega? This is your omega here, which is four. So now you know t. And the last question says, find the phase shift. The phase shift. So from what we have here, the phase shift is phi all over omega. So the phase shift the phase shift equals negative 3 pi all over 4. So that's the solution for this one. We can try the other one just to ground understanding. So the other question says y equals negative half cosine of 2x negative 2 pi. So we're going to find the same thing. We're going to find the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift also here. So for part b, which is the second question, so we have y equals negative half the cosine of 2x negative negative 2 pi. So again, my aim is that I want to write it in this form, omega into x minus phi over omega, like I did previously. So I'm going to do it step by step. So you have negative half and the cosine of so this is going to be 2x. Now what you observe here is 2 is common. From what you can see here, this is 2. And then this is also 2. So 2 is common, leaving x negative pi. So you can close that bracket there. So this is our y. So when we compare this y to the general form of... Now for here, this is for the sine. Now the general form of a cosine function is... Um, the general form is... Let's just write it as y equals a cosine of so it's similar to what we have there omega into x negative phi all over omega so this is what we have this is very similar to to what we have here so the only difference is that instead of a sine here we have a cosine there that's the only difference now when you compare the two of them you'd observe that your a is negative half your omega is two and then the phase shift this time around is just pi so now note, do not mix this negative sign angle. Just take into consideration only what you have at this side here. So based on the comparing, you have a to be equal to negative half. You have omega to be equal to 2. And then you have phi over omega to be equal to pi. So again, the first question says, find the amplitude. So the amplitude the amplitude equals the absolute value of A. 
and that is the absolute value of negative half which is half the next question says find the period now the period is just given by the formula 2 pi all over omega and then 2 pi divided by the omega we know is 2 so 2 crosses 2 so you obtain pi while the phase shift the phase shift is given by phi all over omega so phi all over omega equals equals pi so this is going to be your solution and that's that completes them the problem